Welcome to Pod Save America. I'm John Favreau. I'm John Lovett. I'm Tommy Vitor. On today's pod, we'll talk about how we did with our 2020 New Year's resolutions mm-hmm. and make some new ones for 2021. But before that, we're starting a new tradition here at Pod Save America where we take a look back at the worst takes of the year, including our own. Welcome to the first annual Pundies. <laughs> <laughs> Accountability. It's coming back. It's the back in pundies. style. Pundies. A few quick notes before we get started. A new episode of Gaining Ground, The New Georgia, dropped today. In this week's episode, Jewel and Rembert explore how the movement for black lives shaped the politics of Georgia over the summer as millions took to the streets in protest. Check out this episode of Gaining Ground, The New Georgia, wherever you get your podcasts. Catch up on the whole series. It's fantastic. New episodes come out every Tuesday. Go listen. And speaking of Georgia... We are just days away from the January 5th runoff that will determine control of the Senate. If you're ready for a new year and a new Georgia, head over to votesaveamerica.com slash Georgia to find something you can do in the home stretch. There will be volunteer opportunities available right up until the polls close on January 5th. Sign up for a shift today. Votesaveamerica.com slash Georgia. Okay, gentlemen, let's get to it. (laughs) Uh, we are going to start with everyone else's bad takes, and then we're going to yes. work work our way to our own bad takes. Uh, if we Tommy, have time, you, if we have time, yeah, who knows? We might be out of time before uh, it's a it's a podcast. They don't they only give us so much time on this thing. Um, yeah, Tommy, you got a bad take? Well, look, I, uh, you know, we learned uh, the hard way that predictions uh, are not the best idea in in 2016, so we tried to steer clear of them this cycle. That doesn't mean that uh, others in the uh, uh, take industrial complex followed suit. So I I just took some headlines, I think, that were about Joe Biden that are kind of worthy. Uh, I'm not going to name names necessarily because no reason to be that mean. But, you know, the Boston Globe had an op-ed that said the new rules of electability mean Joe Biden can't win. That one (laughs) felt a touch off. (laughs) Safe candidates lose. Passionate crusaders win when you write your checks or vote in your primary. Go with your gut. Hey, I'm, I'm that last sentence. I'm all for it. But. The first part, maybe not. Uh, USA Today, Joe Biden can't beat Donald Trump or restore decency. You know, I guess, you know, ha- half of that one's still out. Jury still out on half of that one. Was that was maybe. that the USA Today editorial board? No, it was an opinion contributor. Fuck that person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John. Uh, uh, Politico article from uh, March 13th. A never Biden movement vows not to vote for Joe. On Tuesday night, Joe Biden's campaign was celebrating his latest primary night triumph. By Wednesday morning, never Biden, right in Bernie, Dem exit 2020 hashtags began trending on Twitter. Oh, no. Oh, uh, no, not, not so much. trending. Not so much. Um, you know, there's a whole uh, uh, cottage industry of takes that Joe Biden was in cognitive decline. I feel like all of those people should feel quite bad about those takes basically everything written by the wall street journal editorial page about tony bobolinsky and Hunter biden didn't quite pan out i don't know i'll, I'll pause there i mean i have one more when we come back but you know your thoughts i should say by the way to everyone like these aren't necessarily all the worst takes of the year because one group of people i imagine we're probably going to leave out i am are like like donald trump everyone associated with his campaign and like Fox News and Newsmax, like, obviously all of their takes are the fucking worst. But, like, we, we've we been saying that all year. So we're really trying to branch out with the other takes, as, as Tommy has done with his. Love it, love it. What do you think? So, you know, it's funny. I, I'm just also, like, obviously Joe Biden winning is um was the, was good for a variety of reasons. I don't want to overstate <laughs> it. Uh, but one, one thing you do see is that there are a lot of people who have invested a lot of energy in in the argument that he couldn't win for a variety of um of of reasons that were important to what they would be saying right now had he lost and i'm really glad that those arguments are not around right now i just i think it's a very good thing totally agree if your if your role in politics is um uh slowly polishing your uh take about why the 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 person who isn't quite liberal enough for you and your party didn't win and why you were right i have very little time for you yeah, and I will say also it's funny listening to those takes about why these these you know these never Biden <laughs> hashtags whatever. I always think about it's just like a fact that has stuck with me my whole life, which is that 
um, there was a poll that showed the vast the, the poll that showed a majority of primary voters would never ever support Bill Clinton as the Democratic nominee like weeks before he became the Democratic nominee and it's worth remembering for all of us that th- that even opinions we hold about politics that we think are immutable will change really really fast yeah so we're gonna throw to some audio because I think this might be the most accurate but also the worst take rolled into one and I just I want to enjoy it with you and, and watch your face uh, uh, I feel like this is us I feel like this is us ladies and gentlemen leaders and fighters for freedom and liberty and the American dream the best is yet to come I mean that was Kim Gilfoyle right. the, best, right. the best is yet to come Joe Biden won the election Kim Gilfoyle gave a good take there <laughs> well you know, in the middle was mass death but yes that's true that's true that's true <laughs> Uh, I filmed a little video of Pundit running around in the snow and she was just like throwing her face into this like fresh white powder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's an adorable, it's an unrelated what? Why so, it was just a cute so thing. These pundits do takes, yeah. <laughs> I have a bad take. Uh there were several times over the last year, really over the last four years, where um journalists and pundits had an insatiable urge to believe that 74-year-old Donald Trump had finally changed his ways. Let's take a listen. I think we have a clip. He became president of the United States in that moment, period. 82% of people who saw the speech called Mr. Trump presidential, including a majority of Democrats. The president had a very steady tone. I didn't count a single insult. If Trump continues with this tone and temperament, if he continues with what he was doing before, uh, who knows where Americans uh, will be in the next few days or weeks. The Donald Trump that we saw today here at the Times was uh, a a different tone. He sounded positive. Uh, He seemingly recognized the power of his office. President Trump seemed sobered by these first 40 days in office, didn't he? Then today, another speech and a starkly different tone. Striking a different tone. Dramatic change in tone. Strikingly different tone. Tone was Markedly different. Significantly changing his tone. Stunning change in tone from just last Friday. In his first White House coronavirus briefing in months, President Trump sharply changed his tone. Now we have a a significant shift in tone. It was a totally different message and different tone. I do think this press conference will be remembered for the change in tone from the president. (sighs) I mean, (laughs) first of all, thank you to Yale for putting that compilation together. Fantastic. Great library music. Great library music. Great music choice. Really important. I can't important. wait to share that on social media because there's a, yeah, there's a video ringtone. component to all of that. So we'll put that up. Also, I know you, you, I can recognize a lot of those voices. A lot of those people are very smart. I, I don't yeah. know how you get pulled into saying this shit. Four years. I think the, I think the new tone stuff, particularly around um, COVID, will, all, will always get me the angriest. Although it's funny because at the time, the new tone stuff around, or that this is how he became president around um, striking Syria, <laughs> or not, not striking Syria, yeah. was the, um, was the, that was the old winner for making me the most mad about new tone. But the COVID stuff really took the cake. The two, yeah. Remember after that first press conference and they were all like, oh, wow, he's very presidential now. He's really taking this seriously. Yeah, that, that panned out. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, it does seem that there was like, a, it, I think that there are, a mix of motivations. Obviously, every person has different motivations. I think at times it was sort of fanciful thinking, like a desire for it to be true. At times it was mm-hmm. a desire to just say something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there was also this moment where there was this sort of idea that like, if enough reporters start rewarding Trump for yeah. having a better tone, it would be reinforced and might have a positive result. But yeah, here we are uh, from... from uh, Day one to the coup didn't work. Yeah, it hasn't not learned. Um, any other? Uh, you guys got any other? Some outside I, bad takes. I, I will say one. One. This is this is a subtler bad take because I I think that there have been some incredibly frustrating Nate Silver takes and some incredibly frustrating anti Nate Silver takes. And here is <laughs> where I have landed on all of this, which is. Mm both sides in in fairness i will i will absolutely in fairness Mm -hmm. uh to to my uh to my math to my mathy friends to the modelers i don't believe nate silver ever makes 
ever overinterprets the model that he has built. But I, what frustrates me is that there is a kind of, there's like, the, there's the creation of these models. Then, then there is an argument that says, don't overinterpret these models. Don't take these things too seriously. They can't say more than exactly what we say they can say. But you can't lament the fact that the model is being overinterpreted when the model exists and succeeds so that people who aren't as familiar with the statistics can overinterpret it. And so it's like at a certain point, my like the bad take is believing assigning a percentage to a an election is has value and can be interpreted broadly in a way that's helpful to anybody. That's my that's my model take yeah. after year also, election two of the models being frustrating. Not that they were wrong. But I also just think like there's a there's a very helpful part of it where they're just sort of like compiling polls and like doing sort of like statistical analysis but then they sort of jam in a bunch of factors that are kind of impossible to quantify like press coverage or fundraising or things that it's like wow, how are you deciding how that's weighted my my the thing that most frustrated me is and we'll get to polls at one point but like <laughs> there's this there, there was a take after the polls were up this time and it's like well um you know the polls weren't so far off in a lot of places and they weren't so bad in comparison to history but it's like okay if the tipping point state is Wisconsin and the Wisconsin polls were off by just as much, if not more than they were last time, then that's a huge fucking problem for polls. I don't care yeah. if the California polls were better. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we don't care about other polls. We care about what happens in fucking Wisconsin because that's the tipping point state. <laughs> totally. But I, I also but like that also this to me is, I think, why I think some of the critics of the models are going too far. That's not on the the people using the polling as best they can to create these models. Oh, I totally agree. I totally agree. So Nate takes a lot of the heat and, and, the, and the modelers and the, and the pundits uh, for, pe for the actual pollsters who got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. it's, there's a, you know what it is? It's like, I, like, that's the thing. I understand the frustration of people like Nate Silver because they're like attacked for all these reasons that aren't true. But it's just like, like, it's like, how dare you attack me for my model, you mathematical morons? Now, right. carefully interpret this incredibly complicated model based on mathematical formulas and statistics that are far beyond anything I will explain. I would argue the uh, their Twitter tone uh, does them no favors in this regard either. <laughs> uh, here's a more cut and dry one. Uh, on a North Dakota radio show, Eric Trump claimed his father literally saved Christianity. <laughs> That's a quote. <laughs> Wait, I got... I <laughs> I got a few, and I just made up this game on the spot. I'm going to read the take and see if you guys can guess who it came from. Ooh, I love this. <laughs> this is exciting. Okay. This. Just, just on the spot, I just thought about doing this. So this was I'm a, excited. I'm going to use a gayer this, voice for this it. This was an April column <laughs> is, the, is okay. the hint. An April column. And, mm -hmm. the, and the title of the column was, America Shouldn't Have to Play by New York Rules. And he, maybe that might have given it away. And here's, the, here's a quote from it. It is stunning to contemplate the extent to which the country's COVID-19 crisis is a New York crisis. No wonder so much of America has dwindling sympathy uh, with uh, the uh, idea uh, of Brett prolonging... Brett Stevens, Brett Stevens, Brett Stevens, yes. Brett Stevens. <laughs> In yes. April, Brett yes. Stevens said that we should have no more lockdowns, no more restrictions, because it's only New York that's hurting from COVID and the rest of the country is fine. Curves are flattening. Hospital systems haven't come close to being overwhelmed. Americans have adapted to new etiquettes of social distancing. That's Tommy's best friend, Brett Stevens, at the New York yeah, from, Times. From, from the mind that brought you uh, Sinkaran's Navy. It'll be very simple to do that. No, no problem. Who, uh, <laughs> who can, uh, here, here's one. This piece for, is from February, after the virus just began to hit, called um, Donald Trump the Luckiest Man. <laughs> Quote, Democrats are on the defensive after Trump's impeachment acquittal in Iowa debacle. A Democratic socialist is surging in the race, and some economists think that post-coronavirus, the recovery wave will push an economic surge closer to the election. Trump is enjoying the same lucky breaks in politics that he enjoyed in birth and business. I, I have a guess. I have a guess. Who? I have a guess. Is that Hugh Hewitt? You guess uh, Kim Strassel? No, not Hugh Hewitt. Not Kim Strassel. Much more mainstream. Name names. <gasps> no. Wait. It is Axios' own Jim Vandehei. Oh, <laughs> wow. Man. That oh, is man. so bad. Oh, my God. Yikes. Yikes. How oh, about wow. that one? Yikes. He strassled <laughs> himself. <laughs> Jeez. That's not that right. Was, that's, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, there was also a lot of Trump might dump Pence takes. Which mm. were that was there was a whole cottage industry. There was one I, that was so I rode certain. that 
Tiger for a little bit. I was pretty into that one for a little bit. Some, some people rode the t- Some people were, uh, were, you know, Trump might dump Pence curious, right? Here, here's a quote. <laughs> this is not a prediction. It's a certainty. On Thursday, <laughs> July 16th, that's the date the Democrat gives his or her acceptance address. On that day, to interrupt the narrative, Donald Trump will call a press conference at Mar-a-Lago. He's going to dump Mike Pence and put Nikki Haley on the ticket to try to get those suburban moths. I got it. I got it. QAnon. <laughs> no? It, it was very smart Democratic strategist Paul Begala, who just like this is this is the this is the trouble with being so certain in your predictions. <laughs> yeah, it's Twitter I, brain. I maybe that was maybe look. I I would not there look pundits have been known in the past to get a hot tip and then pass it off as a prediction. Maybe it was in the works. Maybe, maybe it, it almost happened. I, I would look. Maybe, yeah. Trump changes his mind a lot, and look, dumping it's Mike true. Pence. He couldn't have lost more, I guess, you know. Sure. Um, one that we have to point out is um, the reelected senator from Maine, Susan Collins, after Trump's impeachment. And she said, I believe the president has learned from this case and will be much more cautious in the future. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? She laughed last on that one. She, she did. She did. She did laugh last on that one. The people in Maine heard that and they said, you know what? Six more years. I will say, you know, on impeachment, uh, there were takes in variety of a variety of directions as to how important it would be, and they all turned out to not really be true. Like, it's hard to say that uh, the election shifted at all in any direction because of impeachment. We barely remembered it happened by the time we got to November. I feel like we all were kind of exactly on board. Oh, I was. That was, yeah, we, was were, really, we were. I thought I thought impeachment would have some kind of effect, and it had no effect anywhere. Um, yeah, it was a waste of time. So, uh, Tommy, this is your best friend. I think you'll see mm-hmm. uh, by June a lot of the country should be back to normal, and we'll be really rocking by July. <laughs> oh, Jared. Rockin by July. Yeah, there you go. Rocking by July. July. Rocking by July. What really he meant rockin'. was rocking super tight suits and and uh, VC vests. I mean, they did rock over the summer. They just were super spreader events. That's right. That's right. Can, I, can I give you a, a take genre that I think just has to be mentioned, which was yeah. a shadow app conspiracy mongering. Remember oh, nice. Iowa, Bring it. the Iowa caucus results didn't come in and it just exploded on the internet as if this was some like conspiracy theory to take down Pete or Bernie or everybody, right? Uh, the Intercept had a piece about, the, the headline was new details show how deeply Iowa caucus app developer was embedded in democratic establishment as if this was some plan. People were accusing Mayor Pete of like paying for the shadow app as part of a, a, a plan to take down Bernie. Uh, one person tweeted, honestly, this is on Obama, who spent more effort getting a rather incompetent Tom Perez to be the head of the DNC than on any other post-presidential political effort. Yes, Barack Obama coded the shadow app and he sold it to the Iowa Democratic Party. Uh, just absolute madness. Madness. We we were accused we were because, in we, it. because because yeah. we know Tara McGowan. <laughs> we took yeah. a picture at a birthday party, and <laughs> and in the end, it was a incredibly sneaky effort by Mayor Pete to sabotage results he ultimately was the winner of, thereby denying him the momentum into future contests. That's, I am that's a, I am very that's happy that that whole thing happened sneaky. though because it led me to mute a ton of people that I have not thought about ever since. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. My life is mm-hmm. better. Um, I'm trying to think of another. Oh, there's uh, there's one there's one more. F- uh, if it ends up that Biden wins, I guarantee you the week after the election, suddenly all those Democratic governors, all those Democratic mayors will say, everything's magically better. Go back to work. Go back Ted to Cruz. school. That's wrong, and it's cynical. <laughs> Ted Cruz. <laughs> that, Ted the Cruz. Is the Ted end. Cruz. That's wrong, and it's cynical. Shame yeah, on that. That is, Shame that on is cynical, tisk, tisk. Ted. Tis, That's tisk. fucking cynical. Tis, tis. C- c- can, I, can I read you a take and you guys guess who it was? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is okay, this, this is this is a two parter. So in October, this person uh, said, "Why aren't they talking about deaths uh, regarding COVID? Because the number is almost nothing. Because we've gotten control of this thing." Uh, dot dot dot. Fast forward a month later, uh, posted. Apparently, I got the Rona. Oh shit! It's some kind of a trumper. Apparently. It was absolutely a trumper. 
apparently I've got the Rona. Uh, Don Jr.? Think, like, divorce dad energy, yes. 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 Don Jr. Don Jr. Don Jr. <sighs> Don Jr. Um, any other ones? Are we good? Is that is that it for outside takes? Well, let me give you one more. around in the snow. W- one more. Uh, <laughs> March 13th. Uh, uh, hashtag coronavirus advice. Everyone should also insure with an I. Uh, mouth and throat are moist, never dry. Take a few sips of water every 15 minutes. Even if virus gets into your mouth, drinking water or other liquids will wash them down through your throat and into stomach where acid will kill virus. Oh, whoa. Oh, who is what? that? Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> he tweeted that. What a he was he's been special this year. Um one more. This was this is this goes to your first initial your first round of takes, Tommy. Um this will be decided in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. I know what will work there. Safe will not work. Biden, we will lose because Biden is Hillary. Biden is Hillary. Michael Moore? Yes. Oh, good one. Yes. Very yes. good. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you that nailed was that. Very impressive. That's a pull. I'm proud of that. <laughs> that was a great I'm proud pull. of that. Well, <laughs> Michael he also Moore. Michael Moore also told me on stage uh I it was a moment of there was a real moment of kind of I don't know, of like good feeling about like how we were all collectively going to fight and I said I asked him. I thought I was like kind of teeing him up and I asked him about Biden and I thought I was like, oh, maybe he'll say. So. And then he just said, Biden won't be the nominee. I was like, oh, hmm. OK, well, I, hmm. yeah, anyway. I, I, I was there for a while, too. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, no, I was no, going no, to say no, we're not in our own bad takes yet. But if we want to talk about the Biden thing, we were we wow. got pretty close, pretty close. We Listen, didn't go there, but we got pretty close. We, did, we left. We left ourselves a couple of um, exits. You could pull a lever and get down a raft and get out. Right. The top, you know, we could. The, if you listen to the pods of us between him, specifically between him losing Iowa and winning South Carolina, we were um, fairly down on his chances. Uh, listen, I, I think the Biden team, if, if over a couple of beers, would tell you that they were too. The, the <laughs> Iowa, well, the Iowa results being a wash was a weird sort of X factor. No one anticipated it. taking fifth in New Hampshire was certainly not the plan. And then that sort of that New Hampshire night event he did in South Carolina, it did not have a great feeling. And then they did an incredible job kicking ass in South Carolina, the Clyburn endorsement, and it changed everything. And then obviously COVID hit. So, you know, it was complicated as I think what everyone would admit to here. Yeah. Yeah. An- Anzalone, uh, their po- Johnny Anzalone, who's their pollster, was on, um, was on Hacks, Hacks on Tap. And he was talking about this and he said that they, they definitely, they knew that Iowa wasn't going to go well, but they didn't know it was going to go that poorly. And yep. then they said that they both go into South Carolina the night in New Hampshire, like you said, and their second place finish in Nevada, even though it wasn't super close to Bernie. The fact that it wasn't about Bernie, it was the fact that they finished ahead of everyone else in Nevada, mm-hmm. set them up for South Carolina without much competition aside from Bernie. And that was yeah, yeah. What, what did it. For sure. um, all right, let's do some of our own bad takes. I have this, I have this take, and uh, I'll do the take first, and then we can assign it. Do I think the Biden campaign will be actively competing and spending money in Georgia and Texas come October? No, I do not. It's probably wishful thinking. I think soon Texas and Georgia will be battlegrounds, but I don't think yet this cycle. Look, I'll cop to that one. Uh, <laughs> I'd say I was I was fifty percent right there. Okay, and I also think um, yeah, you could argue yeah, you that were. you could argue the take that. is half full, Tommy. <laughs> the take is half full. Well, they did you compete. Could. They did compete and spend money in Texas. <laughs> yeah, but barely. I mean, right? Like, I think that we were focused on the traditional battleground states, and then Georgia became the real, real stretch where we were actually sending the candidates. They were sending Barack Obama. They were sending big surrogates. So, look, once again, Stacey Abrams was right. We were wrong. It could have been in part of our adopt a state program. It's not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spread this take around like a fine, uh, shit smelling mulch <laughs> all around crooked media. Like Barack Obama to a plumber. <laughs> I'm, I'm spreading the wealth my... around. Remember, that was a <laughs> I do sorry remember. to Take Joe the back. plumber. I yeah, took yeah. it back emotionally. Yeah, Joe the plumber. I'm mad at myself for not pushing harder on Georgia. Not that I thought it the whole time. Although I, later in that thing, I, I made the case for Georgia, but only because. Like, I'm most at fault here because I sat down with Stacey Abrams for The Wilderness, and she made the pitch for me about Georgia, and it was a really good pitch. And then I was just still like, yeah, it just seems like if we're at Georgia, we've already won North Carolina <laughs> or Florida. Right, that's, Guess not. Right. That's what's interesting. Like, yeah, like we did six. What? Which state would we have swapped out? I guess we would have swapped out 
Florida, North Carolina for Georgia. If we knew, but it's it was it's also but, hard to imagine not competing in Florida, North Carolina either. You know, like, you gotta try. They, they, you gotta try. They were still close. Um, Look, I'll read number nine. All of you privately in the office saying that Elizabeth Warren was going to be the nominee. Frown face. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't remember us saying I don't that think she I was going that. to be the nominee. I don't in the think office. so either. We all liked Elizabeth Warren. See that, that I, was the. I, I'm, that's I was I'm certainly taken by her far. Iowa organization. I, I was very impressed Jordan, by her Jordan, campaign. Yes. <laughs> Jordan Waller is in the chat now saying this is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, give us the like, – you have receipts. Did you record your bosses while we said yeah. this? No, you didn't, so then we mm. don't believe you. <laughs> no mics didn't happen. Instagram or it didn't happen. <laughs> but this uh, is why we were good on, on predictions because we um, – because we we're out of the predictions business, we came close <laughs> on Warren, but I don't know that we definitely – we liked Warren. That's for sure. Well, there's, there's <laughs> also something saying, else in here. There was also something that's else not in a here bad about, take, Jordan. We, we can't just read the chat and not tell the people. <laughs> no, I am. I'm, I was. I thought I was gonna let. Yeah, Jordan said I cut love it saying vote for Warren from a pod at least three times. Okay, that's Let's... fair, Jordan. That's fair. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that either. <laughs> uh, I'll let that in the world. You all know. We, we listen. We, we were. In, you know. It's okay. Don't say we. Say you. I'm talking about you. I. 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 Fine. Whatever. Tommy, did you have something that you were about to? No. Okay. Um, so here, here's one. Um, this is our staff really helpfully, um, I guess, looked back through our in, internal office slacks and found this one from me. I said, public service announcement. The polling bots that do flashback to 2016 drive me fucking insane. State polls were not weighted by education in 2016. It was the main problem with the state polls. They overestimated the number of college-educated voters and underestimated the number of non-college-educated voters. That's why they looked better for Hillary than they should have. Most high-quality pollsters have corrected this problem. <laughs> very confident. I was very confident that the polls had been fixed. They had not been fixed. It turns out that even though they changed the weighting so they had more non-college educated white voters in the polls those non-college educated white voters that they got when they changed the weighting happened to be the 30 percent of non-college educated white voters who voted for biden <laughs> so it didn't work and we have a real fucking problem with polling uh going yeah. forward where it's just that people with low social trust who don't want to answer phones who don't want to take surveys because they don't trust anything don't trust any institutions also happen to be trump voters and that could be a real problem with the polling industry going forward. Yeah, it's not great. It's not it's not great, especially because these elections are all, you know, look, so many of them are so close. And it's like, let's, you know, let's find out after the election how accurate the polls are kind of does away with the value. Yeah. Yeah. Travis suggested we should talk about Love It insulting Shit's Creek. Uh, how dare you? I love Shit's Creek. <laughs> I love Shit's I love Shit's Creek. I will cop to having a class <laughs> critique of the family that I, I there is a I, I'm t uh, that there is they come love it, into love the it, town. Love it. Tommy and I are just sitting here quietly. By the way, <laughs> he's there dissembling. Is a, I I will say here's my issue. Here's my issue. They lose everything. They're laid low. They show up mm -hmm. in the town pretty quickly. They're running an apothecary. The other runs a hotel. They they very quickly um, regain some of their status. They become bosses again. Mm. That's it. That's my critique. You know, hashtag Bernie or bust. <laughs> um, one of our fantastic producers, Caroline well. Reston, uh, wanted to point out that Tommy compared the transitional clusterfuck to a Bravo show and that this is unfair to Bravo shows slash imply something negative. And then she added a note. This does not have to be an anonymous edition. I'm happy to slap my name to this complaint. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Caroline, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a heavy Bravo watcher, but like I feel like the core kernel of a lot of Bravo reality shows is they're just messy as hell. Am I not wrong? Are the, are the Kardashians like thoughtful? That's why we love like, Bravo shows, right? Right. I don't even get it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not, it's not an insult. I, it's just such a shame that this conversation about Bravo is taking place with two straight guys and the only gay person at Crooked Media that doesn't watch them constantly. <laughs> oh, God. Jordan, Jordan Waller says the Kardashians are not Bravo. Whatever. I stand by my Ooh, take. Ooh, tough, <laughs> tough. Are they Bravo-ish? Is that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, e, Bravo, same, same shit. Same exact shit. 
E, bravo, whatever, you know what I mean. We're gonna start with our resolutions from last year, see how we did, and we actually have uh, clips of these resolutions so we can hold ourselves accountable. Uh, let's, play, let's play my resolution here. I cannot spend all of my day and all of my night paying attention to politics, reading about politics, looking on Twitter, being on my phone. So I know everyone says things like, oh, I wanna read more. I am setting a goal for myself of one book per month. Hmm. I think that is, I don't know if that's a lot or not because I haven't read in years. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am just so anxious all the time. I think that I have to start like Therapy? meditation. Oh, I've never meditation. done any oh. kind of meditating. <laughs> That's uh, wow. amazing. I d wow. I've done none of that. I you did not do zero meditation. I mean, no, so I read, I zero read. times. No, I am just as anxious. I spend just as much time paying a politi pay attention to politics, and I am just getting through promised land now. <laughs> Listen, John. I think uh, you know, hope springs eternal on the on the meditation front. We can we can do a guided one as a as a team as a podcast. Maybe we start every episode with the ten minute guided meditation. I would appreciate that, Tommy. As long as I can be okay. on my phone. <laughs> Who's uh, up? Let's hear love it. Let's hear love it. I want to have a sustainable model for eating food such that I don't feel guilty about what I'm eating. And so for me, what has worked in the past is clean, good eating decisions most of the week, and then two absolutely fucked up balls to the wall, no holes barred. <laughs> No rules, no society, no cameras, no one watching dinners. So I want to get the bad feelings away from the food. I, I want to be in my in work, in life. I just want to these three things I want to always be thinking about. I want to be positive. I want to be generous and I want to be disciplined. And I just just a little more positivity, a little more generosity and a little more discipline uh, will go a long way to making me someone other people will want to be around. Holding yourself to a positivity take is tough in a pandemic, you know? This mm. was tough. I, I will say... Uh, I think so you've been I a little more disciplined. I, I do, too. I think you've done a I good job I think you've been much more disciplined. One. I've really... I've really... Thank you for saying so. I think I've tried. On the food front, <laughs> I... No, I didn't say anything about that. <laughs> I failed so completely. <laughs> I failed so spectacularly. We went to Vegas for... Um, the caucuses. I mean, I didn't know about the caucuses. My, la but I my found last out. trip out of California in 2020. Yeah. That was it. Got to Vegas, found out about the caucuses. Good coincidence. But uh, <laughs> I ate. I ate two buffets there, which is obscene. It was we were there for a weekend. I ate two buffets, and in my mind, mm. it was a last hurrah. You know. Well, it was. Well, you were right, I, so. I, well, what I what I mean is, I thought I would get back and have good eating habits and really oh. try. I have that never happened. Uh, every, <laughs> I have felt. A little guilty with every bite of food I have taken this year. Every healthy meal feels like a sop to failure. Every cheat feels like an undeserved calamity. And it is horrible <laughs> because I eat a couple times every day. So I have got I have got to get this in check. Not just because not just for health, not just for health, but because like I like Connecting food with these bad feelings all the time is so unhealthy, and I need to stop. I need to I stop. Mean, you know, Jokes this is being like Noom as well, too, right? <laughs> yeah. Jokes is, yeah. Noom, yeah. Noom will help with this, I think, right? For real. Yeah, I Noom. think Noom, will, Noom has helped. Noom will help. I also will say, I um, uh, as long as we're I'm in an unhealthy uh, body image place, I will say I saw the interview I did with Matto, and I look like a bloated, mummified corpse, and I realized I forgot to drink water in 2020. And I would lie to you and say that it's because I want to be healthier. But if I drink a glass of fucking water, I look 10 years younger. It's the fountain of youth. Oh, okay. That's great. That's easy. It's a good solution. So try hydrant. Yeah. But thing is, <laughs> I just, just need to alternate sponsors. water. <laughs> I just got to alternate water with Diet Coke and coffee. And, the, and yeah. this tumbler has the ice from my coffee. And I filled it with Diet Coke once it was empty. I've done that. It's All right. Okay. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> let's um let's hear Tommy's. Uh, my first resolution is to not get upset when I don't follow through with any of my resolutions. You know that little um, notification that comes through on your phone on Sundays that says you've spent X number of hours on your phone this week? Yes, I, I need do. that guy to go down. Like, what's yours at? Over four hours. I need that thing to go down. Yours is over four hours. 
Oh, I will not share mine. What right. is it? What is it? What is it? Come Definitely on. over four. Come on, share it. It's up to six or seven. <laughs> 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 That's a lot more. I want to, uh, this came up today. I want to don't, if you're going to donate money to candidates, I want to do it earlier. And I want to do it until it hurts a little bit. I want to go to more movies in the theater. <laughs> great. I pick. More I pick. That's yeah. great movies in the theater. <laughs> What well, a bummer. That is so, that what is a bummer. so sad. That last really one is sad. so sad. I did give to candidates earlier, and it did hurt. I got in trouble with Hannah at one point. But, uh, the, yeah. The movies in the theater, and I, and I talked about the iPic. Boy, do I miss the iPic. <sighs> Me too, man. I saw, God. People have been tweeting pictures from last year's tour shows, uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> and it made me very sad. Also, um, I believe our uh, our tour shows for 2020 went up like mid February. Like the promotion for all the shows went up like right before. What a bummer! What a bummer! All right, well, let's talk about uh, resolutions for this year. Who's got some resolutions for 2021 they want to share? Tommy, sure. I, I mean, I, I did my normal thing of like a, a bunch of little ones. So I'll, I'll give you my bucket of work ones. Turn off the camera during Zoom. I miss real meetings but I hate that every call has been replaced by a Zoom. I want to end the tyranny of the Zoom camera always being on because you end up looking at yourself and I hate it. One, short emails. I read one of those articles about how like effective people just like reply really quickly to stuff. I want to do that. No fluff. Oh, wow. That would maybe, be so maybe that's, cool. Ugh. Maybe that's not doable in this sort of like ultra- Let's all do it. Like, Let's all do it. Pandemic workplace. But right, you just get a reply, like just the facts. And then you guys, I know you guys feel the same way about this one. I want to fix my schedule. My, my, my work week structure for listeners back home is basically like be as anxious as humanly possible uh, Sunday through Tuesday when we wrap Pod Save the World. And then like Thursday, Friday, sometimes I'm like, what should I do today? And I got to figure out a way to be more efficient or spread this stuff out or else I'm just going to be a nightmare. Um, love it. Yeah, I mean, I so <laughs> I need to get back into a routine. I've said this every year for four years, but it continues to be true because sometimes like I need to get up earlier, even when I'm on the out, even when I'm on the East Coast, I feel like I wake up behind you. you. Tommy, John and Dan are like air traffic controllers, making sure every tweet in the sky is monitored. <laughs> <laughs> they never miss a fucking shift. I wake up at 8 a.m. Eastern. Tommy's already yucking it up with Matt Negrin. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I just always feel a little bit behind. So I want to wake up and work out because when I do that, my mood is better. My health That's is good. better. I'm more productive. I have to do that. I have to do that. Ronan and I are prone to a late bedtime. We are gamers at heart and it is very bad for the both of us. So we're going to work on that. Um, and then also for next year, I want to, I obviously want to read more, but I actually just want to read more about issues that I care about. Like I want to, I, this is sounds silly, but I want to read a book about why infrastructure in America costs so much. It's something I care about and I don't feel like I know enough about it beyond the articles I read. You know what I mean? I want to go like a little bit deeper. Like I care about corporate consolidation, but I feel like after, like, I feel like I've run out of thoughts about it because I haven't read enough about it lately because we were so focused on the election and I want to make more things. I want to, I want to, talk about star wars in a podcast or something i want to like talk i want to like create more and spend less time creating tweets it's good i'm I, i'm gonna just try to do baby steps on the like i'm gonna tweet less and i'm gonna read books like that's obviously not gonna happen folks it's not gonna happen for me <laughs> uh, but i do <laughs> this is I good do, progress this is good yeah no i do want to just like lengthen my attention span let's let's uh, try that good. so like if it's i'm like reading stretching. about news and politics just like read longer stories um spend time doing something where i am focused only on that thing and that i'm not picking up my phone while doing that thing or talking to a bunch of other people um <laughs> like i just so i want to i want to lengthen my attention span and focus more on what i'm doing if i'm with family if i'm with friends whatever i'm with focus on that a little bit more uh i am also I am not turning down any invitations to see people in 2021 once yes. the pandemic has gone down and people are vaccinated. I am going to everything. I'm Me going too. to see everyone. And the other thing I want to do is like really spend the time catching up with friends and family that I have, have not been able to see or talk to that much in 2020 because of the pandemic. Because like 
God, if there's ever a question whether I'm like an introvert or an extrovert, uh, this pandemic has made me realize I am an extrovert and I desperately need to see people and talk to people and have social interaction because this year is rough. Uh, and then, it's it, yeah. And, and then the last thing for me is I just want to be more grateful because it has been a, a tough year and a real tough year for a lot of people. And I want to be, I want to remember to be grateful for, for what I have and the people in my life. So. I, I'm surprised by how hard it is to stay in touch with people that I would have been in touch with during the pandemic. It's there's something totally. about having less to talk about and the things we do talk about are so depressing that like, yeah, the, the, we, we kind of don't have as many stories to tell each other and it makes the None. catch ups like not as satisfying. And so, like, I think everybody has given each other more space than even I would have expected. And like, I feel like even in this moment, like my circle has shrunk a bit. Not that I don't like love all the people that I will very much reach out to and want to spend as much time with as humanly possible next year. But I, I am, I do feel the same way. Like I also feel, look, I, I, um, without my weekly dose of 150 people applauding at the improv, uh, I'm barely, I'm barely able to get out of bed. <laughs> We were frankly. in a good place there for a minute, but yeah. So if, 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 if we're going to if we're going to more personal ones, if we're going to more personal ones. Uh, so I had one that's um, holding grudges. Holding grudges is bad for you. The resentment it just festers. It bothers you at a low boil. So 2021 is about finishing the job. I thought we were getting to something like, uh, you know, when you hold a grudge, it's poison. You take yourself. Nope. You know, something nope. like that. You don't squash it, you win it. That's what 21 is about when it comes to grudges. And then this one for all of us and for our listeners, uh, we're going to tune out Trump. we got to move on from this guy. It, like, it, it needs to be a collective act. He will remain in control of the Republican Party, but it's going to take discipline from all of us to not react and amplify the meaningless outrage of the day. He cannot be the country's national narrator of events for 2021, 22, 23, and 24. we got to remind ourselves that he is a shithead from New York uh, who is now just a former president loser. Uh, Didn't need to hear some anti-New mm -hmm. York bias in there slipping in at the end. He's a, shithead from, he's, a sh he's a shithead from South Florida. Um, oh, he's yeah, in Florida. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're thank right, you. Right. Apologies. So I, at, at the risk of, I don't want to predict anything because this will be played back to me next year, but like I've gone back and forth on this for a while. I think like he... He has like a, I, I believe he has a tight grip on the Republican Party. And because he has such a tight grip on the Republican Party, um, he will be a factor in politics and news coverage for a while. But like, I, I've been thinking about it more the last week or so, especially since I've noticed he's even felt like in the last couple days, in the last, like we, it, he hasn't been at the top of every headline. He hasn't been at, at, at the front of mm -hmm. every news story. And I do wonder like, if all he has is a big fucking Twitter feed, but he is not in the White House, he is not in Washington, he is not part of congressional negotiations, he is not part of, you know, foreign policy and foreign trips, like, if he's not part of all that stuff and all he has is his Twitter feed and his, like, calls to Fox and Friends and he's always on Newsmax or OAN, like, maybe he really won't be that much part of the conversation. Like, there might actually be some hope for that. I have yeah, no I faith in Jeff Zucker and a bunch of fucking mm, yeah. executives who decide these things but maybe maybe i don't know i think it's more like i think we have to actually internalize like trump is important insofar as he is the leader of a dangerous right-wing anti-democratic movement and the more central he is to that movement which is a threat and is important uh the more i think he'll be covered and i'm more and the more i think he'll probably deserve some coverage but um i think there are gonna be a lot of people vying to uh see where this mob is going so that they might lead them yep all right anything else yeah i mean look i want to dust off some classics i, ju I just uh, bought my first john le carre book <laughs> right, got I, wanna, a long I, list. I want to i want to read them all right also <laughs> you guys talked about your gym okay i was roundly mocked a couple of years ago for saying i wanted to spend less time at the gym i succeeded so joke is yeah, on you shut you them guys. all down you conveniently ignored the other half of that uh, resolution, which was eat healthier so you don't have to go to the gym. But that's okay. Not everyone is understood in their time. You know what I mean? But, you know, that's uh, the, the real point here is how do we get to parts? Like, remember back in de the day when exercising was fun? You played sports or you, like, screwed around with your friends. And, like, I, I want to get to a place where you're doing fun stuff, again, that is that happens to be exercise, like playing tennis. I don't know. Whatever. Tennis. Hey, Tommy, maybe it's time for mm. you and I to play some tennis. I'd love to play. If you love it, if you want to sub in for me, because Tommy and Hannah and Emily are all great tennis players, um, I am not. 
So maybe you maybe you can sub in for me when uh... <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. No, tennis, tennis. When uh, my friend Spencer suggested that he and I play tennis during the pandemic, like I bought a tennis racket. I was so excited to have a new thing. Like every new thing that comes along is like the most yeah. exciting thing that could happen. So yeah, tennis, tennis in 2021. Totally. Um, clean okay. My, cl- clean my car. <laughs> I just wrote down a bunch of little ones. <laughs> oh, you, oh you, you got more? Keep going. Keep Todd. going. No, I don't want to stop you. You just paused for a second. That's why I want I, 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 I have no I, more. I, I'm done. I haven't cleaned my car in, in over a year, and it makes Hannah very annoyed. It looks like, yeah, it used to be black, and now it's just sort of a gray. And I think that she doesn't she doesn't love that. Uh, last thing I have, I, uh, I I had a period during quarantine where I was playing a lot of guitar, like in playing almost every night. And I got so much better so quickly. And I want to figure out almost a curriculum for myself and sort of a reasonable schedule that's like three times a week. You play for 20 minutes and just commit to that. And then and then I'll be happy. Uh, I <laughs> Even though we've been in quarantine for uh, almost a year now, the last month I've started like really playing piano again. And it does feel like, wow an activity something new something different something to like have my mind work a different way so i actually want to do the same thing with piano i just on the car front uh i'm hoping this is repaired by the time this episode has come out so like (laughs) every morning i've been borrowing ronan's mom's car so that's mia farrow's car and driving (laughs) to mcdonald's dunkin donuts or starbucks to the drive there and i get myself a coffee i get what a variety of places that you're attending It's ex- well, it's var- varieties of spice of life, John. And I transfer, I get what I do is I get the Dunkin' Donuts, I transfer it into a tumbler, and then I Purell my hands, and then I can have it. And it's like a routine. I, I put mm-hmm. on my mask when I go through the drive thru, though a lot of people don't. The problem is so I fill the, I pour out the plastic cup, then I close the plastic cup, then I throw it uh, into I the know. bottom right. And yep. when I say the well of Mia's car oh, God, is filled man. with just garbage, throw just it away. empty plastic cups, crumpled up breakfast sandwich that. containers. I hate that. I hate cars like that. It, I hate like, people who do that with their cars. Literally, throw your like, shit away. you couldn't get in. If you open that door, they will fall out the side. It's my dirty secret. Nobody John, knows but me. John, you remember when Lovett's car... I think it's the same car you have now. When he the, the side mirror was literally taped on, and then yes. he lost the key, so we had literally a clothes hanger inside the 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 thing where you turn it on. Does that still the case? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I bought I, a new I had, car. I did have. To, oh, that's I, right. You I got a new car, but I fixed. No, I still have that car, but I gave. I fixed that. I fixed that. Um, and uh, <laughs> that's why I, that, day, that was one of the reasons I wouldn't get in a car with him on the highway. <laughs> that. <laughs> One of the reasons. The other day, Mia asked to asked where the keys were because she was going to go dr- to go get the mail uh, and and drop off uh, drop off some books at Goodwill. And I was like, No, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it for you. No, no, no. I- I'll do it um, because I-, I don't want her to see what's going on in there. Well, hopefully now um, this 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 will fix it by her listening to this. This is good. The deadline. This is good. This is a good a cleansing deadline. of uh, cleansing of the takes, cleansing of the resolutions, cleansing of the car. Um. And last one before we go, then, you know, I said I want to be more grateful. Like, I, I, I am very, very grateful, and I know you guys are too, for all of you, for our listeners, um, because grateful for you guys not just listening, um, but, you know, telling us what you think, whether it's praise or criticism, tweeting at us, reaching out to us, and most importantly, you know, 300,000 of you adopted a state. Um, and did volunteering, sometimes for the first time. You donated, um, you made calls, you did text banks, all during a pandemic when uh, a lot of shit was going on and it was a really tough year. Um, So many of you stepped up to work really, really hard in this election. And um, I don't know, the the, the best part of this job is having uh, a community of people like uh, like all of you who um, are so engaged and so committed. So we we love all of you guys. Thank you. Yeah, and yeah, it's, um, and our amazing team here, at Crooked Media, who who enables everything that we are able to do, despite being uh, like the little engine that could not not nearly enough folks to do all the things that we try to take on this year. But everybody did it with uh, just enormous optimism, despite being all the fun parts of work and all the time we got to hang out just being ripped away from us by this virus, uh, you know, we're still just incredibly successful and, and just so grateful to them and to all the listeners. And yeah. Yeah. I think about, um, I think about the fact that this has been like a four year fight, you know? And I think if we had been able to be together more, celebrate more, 
not just, you know, a few uh, gatherings outside in front of the White House, but like the joy of having been in this fight together for so long and been through something so hard and so awful uh, and like the promise of something better. I feel like I do. I am sad of what we were denied by this pandemic and the failed response. But like I really do go into 2021 so hopeful, so excited about the possibility of a better year. It really is in front of us. And as hard as this has been and as sad as I've been and depressed as I have been, that light at the end of the tunnel has mattered. And so and I'm so glad we can say that we won this election because imagine how we'd feel if we hadn't. Yeah. Oof, my wow. God. Happy New Year, everyone. We will Happy see New you year. in 2021. And here is to a much better year. And spicy takes. Ha, 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 ha.